Hey everybody. So after making my last video on why RVs are built the way that they're built, I wanted to make a follow-up video. One of the number one questions that I was asked right after I made that was, well, what's the best brand to get? What I want to do now is kind of explain why it really doesn't matter what brand you get. For the most part, they're all pretty much constructed the same. The difference between some brands, and it's really only gonna be your super high-end brands, are gonna be how much quality of work went into that construction process. So for instance, people ask, is Forest River a good brand? Is Heartland a good brand? Is Jayco a good brand? What are good brands and bad brands? The reality is all of the brands can make reasonable RVs from their cheapest ones all the way up to their most expensive ones. Sometimes it's just a matter of who did the nailing that day. Was the person happy to be at work? Are they a little bit more skilled with a nail gun than maybe the other guy? You know, the person that's putting the caulking on. If you've ever applied adhesive or caulking to something, you realize that there's people that know how to do it really well, and there's people that don't know how to do it well at all. So depending on the talent, depending on the employees that live in the area, their skill level, how well they know how to use the equipment that they're being given, what their background is, and quite frankly, how satisfied with their job they are. Think of it like a restaurant. You know, you can go to certain cities and let's say there's a hundred different burger joints in that place. Ideally, if the ingredients are pretty much the same, the only thing it comes down to is who's making the burger, who's putting their time and effort into it, who really cares about that product. Now, I do mention occasionally that if you go with the smaller RV manufacturers, the ones that have clearer lines of communication between the executive level and the actual worker on the factory floor, tend to make the better product. And the reason I say that is there's more visibility into it. It's kind of like a gourmet burger restaurant, right? The guy who has to put food on his table at his own home by making hamburgers might put more effort into making that hamburger because he realizes that every hamburger that goes out needs to be good. Look at your own jobs, for instance. Do you have anybody that works around you that may not do their job quite as good as you? Or do you sometimes slack off because you've had a bad day and you rush through things that you probably could have taken more time to do? You don't have to worry about a lot of these things in the automotive industry simply because robots and computers control a lot of it. And all you may have to do is put a bolt in a bolt hole and tighten it to a certain degree that's already been pre-programmed into the wrench that you're using. Whereas the RV industry is all about some guy with a nail gun running down the line adhering 50 nails every minute and using glue, using caulk, using screws to put things in place that don't have really a predefined template. It's kind of like when people are drywalling your house. There's no template in how to drywall your house. There's a guy that will come out that knows the craft of drywalling and he'll know how to tape, float, attach all of that stuff based on his experience. Not so much based on there being a template or a map of everywhere a screw needs to go to hold everything in place. When people say, I'm about to buy a new Forest River, or I'm about to buy a new Jayco, or I'm about to buy this new fifth wheel, is this a good brand? <laughs> That's an impossible question to ask. Even if you look at the higher end brands by all of them, the assembly process is pretty much identical. The parts that are put inside of it might be different, but a lot of times they're also off the shelf parts. Pretty much all the parts of all RVs are universally shared throughout the entire RV industry. The chance of something breaking, the chance of you know a small tear happening in the roof, maybe the lap sealant that they use on top not adhering properly, those are all chances that could actually happen because you have humans applying it. It's not being applied in a systematical approach which allows everything to adhere to much greater tolerances. When you're building something with computers, you pretty much know that the process is going to be identical from RV to RV to RV. The best example of that is cars. And you get into two Chevy trucks that have the exact same features. You're probably not going to expect there to be a quality difference between the two. You just might expect there to be a color difference or a seat cloth material difference or some other difference that isn't going to come down to how the truck was constructed compared to the other truck. I just wanted to make these points because I feel a lot of people are out to find what they think is a really good brand, not necessarily realizing that it's not the brand that's the problem. It's how the company runs their business. 
how the process of putting their RVs together is. Shoot, it could even come down to the management. It could come down to, you know, this shift has a really, really great boss that takes real good care of his employees, but then the next shift has a real hard-ass boss who's constantly driving his employees too hard, so they don't work as effectively and they make more mistakes. When you look at the final product of any RV, the thing you want to hope for is regardless of what brand I got, that the people who assembled it on that specific day, on that specific part of the assembly line, cared about what they were doing and did a good job. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thanks everyone.